Aloha, and welcome back to Physical Therapy for a Better Life. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. I am here today with holistic esthetician Ivy Delaney, who's going to tell us all about the microbiome of our skin. Welcome, Ivy. Hi, Christine. Nice to see you. Thanks for nice having me on. You're welcome. Nice to see you too. I'm, I'm so excited. You've been such a wealth of information for myself, for my patients, and for my viewers on how to have glowing skin at home on a dime, you know, just doing it yourself. And we've all been having so much fun with yeah. that. Uh, so, so thank you. So yeah, I you in December, you mentioned something else besides the lymphatic drainage that piqued my interest and that was the microbiome. And a lot of my patients are talking about, I want to know about that. And I never heard of it until you mentioned it. And tell us all, what is the, the microbiome of the skin? What does that, what does that mean? Okay. So, um, it starts in utero, um, that we, uh, start gaining like microbiome in our gut. Right. So as just like our gut, we have microbiome on our skin. Um, so through um, birth, it typically starts like getting the healthy but microbiome. So that's why they say vaginal birth is, you know, the best because you're getting all of that healthy um, flora onto your skin in the beginning of your life. Um, so that's kind of where it starts and begins. Um, so on our, our skin and in our gut, in, uh, in our self as a being, we have the trillions of microbiome. Um, and they make up of um, different microorganisms, uh, such as like fungi, viruses, bacteria. And um, basically what, what we want to do in our, throughout our lifetime is keep the diversity of these microbiomes on our skin um, so that everything is, is pretty much equal. Um, and that's, that's where you have glowing and healthy skin. So that's just kind of the start of it. Um, we love that. So through, Low yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, like even um, the acne bacteria that's on our skin, and we need that there, right? Um, and then you have the the do I can never say this word, dead dead mix mites, I believe it is, and a lot of people um, say that uh, those uh, cause rosacea in in big balances, in big uh, you know, mm -hmm. if there's too many of them, so. The two of them together kind of step, uh, keep, keep the, everything is almost balanced. So the, the point of it is keeping everything in balance is very, very uh, important and, and just keeping everything diversified. That makes so so much it, sense. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Good, guys, good guys and bad yeah. guys need the equal amount. My friend Michelle was talking about some bone broth and gut healing and broth, you know, and that kind of stuff too. And she explains right. it to her kids when she they she wants to give them something that maybe they don't want to have. She's like, listen, like there's the good guys and there's the bad guys, and you need the balance of good guys and bad guys to be complete and healthy. And so, right, you are good guys right now because you're not feeling well, and that's that's interesting. We also need it on our skin. Wow. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So what I see a lot of times in um you know in skincare, um well I've be, become uh, you know more gone more of the holistic side of estheticians probably about five or six years ago. And I used to do peels and, you know, kind of what, what people wanted, the peels, the microderm abrasion, you know, the, the, the train of thought, you know, in school and, and still to this day is, you know, get those layers off and get that, you know, your skin glowing. Um, mm -hmm. The problem with that is that you, you take away, um, Yes, you can take away some sun sunspots, but you're also taking away the, the microbiome that is actually there to protect you. So that microbiome um, helps to hold in water in your skin. So once it's gone, now you all of a sudden have dehydrated skin that starts sagging. Um, the microbiome helps to heal the skin. So like, let's say you get a little cut, um, and I'm not, I'm talking about my face because I'm an esthetician, but it could be anywhere on your hand. If you are, are using a foaming, hand wash, you know, like that just says it's antibacterial, which we've all been told to use the past couple of years, mm -hmm. right? So 
and you get a cut and it's going to take a lot longer to heal because that that microbiome is not there so it it, it all of that stuff together works together to heal the skin and um so these i call them a pretty aggressive treatments for the skin um they i believe that they do a little bit more harm than good because you know initially you can like look in the mirror and be like wow this looks amazing like look at my glow you know i looked a little dull before but what 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 has happened is you've just taken off such important um part of our ecosystem off of your face and it's it takes a while to come back wow so um that's that's really eye-opening uh for all of us who's ever done any kind of glycolic that's the word I was trying to think of before a glycolic yeah. something which is like a little bit of an acid that they rub on that's supposed to like help right. get off the dead skin stuff right and right you take off your your healthy whatever viruses bacteria all those healthy bugs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so for for people like myself included in the past, I haven't done it in a really long time, but um, I do know what you're talking about. You get it done, you're like, wow, look at this glow! It's really yeah. amazing. Now I know how to glow otherwise. But right, um, what do you what do you do? Like, is there like um, serums or things that you can eat or put on your face, your skin, to uh, promote yeah. flourishing of that flora? Okay, I just want to back up. I, I, I will answer that question, but there was something yeah. you said that I wanted to, to comment on. Is you said um, something about taking off the dead skin cells. So, so many people say this, and so many people believe that, even estheticians. There's no dead skin cells on your body until it hits the floor. Oh. So, anything that's on your skin is still alive until it's not on your skin, until it hits the floor, right? So, uh. the, um, the, those dead skin cells that people are trying to take away, you know, it, it is the very, very last layer. They are ready to go, but there is yeah. some form of protection. And by just really blasting them away is, you know, you're, you're bringing now like baby skin cells that don't have a microbiome there that don't have the protective layer up and are, are going, okay, like, I guess I'm ready, even though I'm, I'm not. <laughs> um, and then you, you cause all kinds of, you know, you, risk more sun damage more hyperpigmentation more of all that so that's just part of 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 that wow. um because that's a myth that i hear so so often i mean all the time you know yeah. i'll get those dead oh, skin that's cells how we learn it, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah so they're not really dead um until they're off of you and yes there are <laughs> ways to um to bring your microbiome back so First of all, some culprits of, of it's not just over exfoliation, like, um, you know, it can be uh, painkillers, you can, um, it can be processed foods, um, anti, um, antibiotics, certain things like that can also disrupt the microbiome of your skin. Some things you can't get away from, but from my side, at just as an esthetician in skincare, that's what I focus mostly on, um, you know, staying away from, I can't tell you how many people are using the wrong skin products. Um, they're using foaming cleansers. Um, so if you have a cleanser that foams up and you're like, oh yeah, I'm, you're washing your face and it's like, you're like wanting that squeaky clean feeling and then you, you dry off your face and then it, it feels so squeaky clean, that's not good. <laughs> a lot of people yeah. really want that. And especially people I, I find that have had skin issues in the past um they really want that feeling but that's not the way that our skin is naturally um so and then also over exfoliation you know in my opinion i exfoliate with a very gentle exfoliator once a month maybe if i feel like i need it you know sometimes people say oh well how often should i exfoli exfoliate should it be once a month once a week every other day and i say you know first of all feel your skin if it feels like a lot of roughness, start with a, a washcloth, just, you know, start lightly there. Um, so, and also I don't always recommend people to wash their face twice a day because, I mean, unless you really feel like you have to, but you always want to use a very, very gentle cleanser 
either gel based or um, just like a cream, any kind of a creamy base, nothing that foams up at all, because typically those have surfactants in them. And that's like, um, like washing your dishes. You want to get the grease off, right? So you use Dawn and you just get that grease off and then your dishes are clean. That's not what we want for our face. <laughs> So oh, I um, that's like so much information. <laughs> it's great information. <laughs> I'm yeah. thinking in my head of everything I've used in the past. Like you said, people use all the wrong cleansers. They use so many different things. And I've used I've used foaming cleansers when I was in Connecticut because my skin was so dry and I felt like it was like dead skin <laughs> that needed to come off. And then somebody told me I should exfoliate. So I went and got like an exfoliator and it says like do it twice a week. So I was like, okay, let me get rid of this dull, dry winter skin and I was using a foaming cleanser and then exfoliating and it's crazy. Yeah. I've also used like some oil stuff too because I felt like I needed to put the oils on after because I right. was so dry but I, I was doing all the wrong things. Sorry. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Well oils are good. I'm I'm definitely about oils. The problem with like certain uh, the, the problem with certain oils is like if you're using let's just say a, a cheap brand or something that isn't, mm -hmm. you know, um sourced the right way or they're using cheap oils a lot of times the oils can go rancid right so then you're oh. putting rancid oil on your face with a foaming cleanser with a so it's it's really all about you know i mean in my opinion finding someone that you can trust and, and in skincare um not quite believing the mass marketing that's going on which is mm -hmm. all over all the time you know even subliminally, I believe. <laughs> and, um, you yeah. know, just, in, I, I'm totally down for like my clients or people just to even start small, like, let's get you on one or two things today that I think that you could, could use. So things that bring the microbiome back, back to that question. So just, you know, a gentle cleanser if needed. Um, I really like to, um, one thing that I think is overlooked a lot is hydrosols or their elixirs. They're usually water-based, um, what what we call to or what people call toners. Um, back in the day, and probably still now, I think it's a little less. But toners used to um, people used to think of them as, oh, you tone your skin. Usually, they would have some alcohol in it, and get the rest of your makeup off. And you could actually look at the cotton ball and see, oh, look, you know, this is actually really working. Um, a lot of that is just oils that you're, you're really seeing. Um, so you're just stripping your face. So, um, in the line that I use, um, I use a lot, it, it has very, um, supportive ingredients in these hydrosols. So there's like herbs and nutrients and it's, it's water-based. Um, but you know, like these herbs are soaked and they're in there and they're there for a specific reason whether you have rosacea whether you need to bring your microbiome back whether you need you know have a little bit of extra oil they'll you know they're formulated that way um so using a, a good quality hydrosol um is awesome and then like going in with your um serums and and balms or moisturizers um and another thing I want to mention is using like a hydrosol, a water-based product um, with an oil-based product, the two together really work well. If you're, if you're looking to bring your microbiome back or if you're feeling like you have dry skin or if you're aging or if you want to help soften your wrinkles, the two together work wonders. So it's, a hydrosol is something I think that is always really overlooked. That's, so, that's, that's, I have so many questions right now. I remember in Connecticut, I was using, I forgot what it was. I was in Poland of all places. I was looking for my family and uh, I went and got a facial when I was in this very old town. And she had this the same thing, my dry skin, all that kind of stuff. And uh, from the winter, she gave me a cream and I told her I had this oil and I put like a couple of drops of the oil in my, it was the moisturizer or the she's like, what are you using for moisturizer? And I was like this. She's like, well, that's not really a moisturizer. That's a like this. And so I remember putting a drop of oil in with my moisturizer and then putting it on my face and how much more moisture I felt. But the other thing I was thinking of is that at night now, I will spritz my face. And I want to ask you, is this like kind of a hydrosol? It's like a rose water spritz. 
Mm -hmm. So I will spritz my face with that. And then I put a couple drops of, what is it? It's, um, it's an oil. And then I, I rub it together and then I put the oil on and then I do my lymphatic <laughs> drainage. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I know I said this to you, funny, and I'm sorry, I've said this on the show before too, that I, my landlady, I saw her afterward and she saw me, she's like, oh my gosh, you look really beautiful. Like do something different. I'm like, I did my like two minute lymphatic drainage with this spray and the oil and I go to bed that way because in the morning I don't have time I wish I did but at night I, I wash my face with a gel cleanser because I had it and and it's now I'm turned over right and I it's so much better I totally agree like I definitely see the difference in my face yeah it just feels nice after washing with a gel cleanser it doesn't feel dry or squeaky it feels nice yeah definitely you don't want if your face is feeling squeaky or or tight after you are you cleanse your face you're using the wrong cleanse and yes yeah. back to that rose water yes that that would be this this thing i think is that the one in the red bottle or pink bottle it's rose water it's a white oh, it's okay. a it's the plastic i got like a little sampler of um like a hyaluronic something or other oh, rose okay water yeah spray, gel cleanser and then one other probably hyaluronic for your eyes when okay brand in new york city and so I just yeah. I had that, that I was using when after yes. I saw you, I'm, like, I'm going to use this. I've got the gel. I've got the spray. I've yeah, got the... I like I like the sounds of all of that. You know, I do. <laughs> I do. I mean, I, I, I would probably stay away from. I mean, I, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know if I, I trust drugstore brands so much, but that's just me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that that actually sounds nice. And I know that there is a rose water that some of my clients use that from like Whole Foods or something. And um, they they love it. And I, I say, you know what, do that. That's fine. You know, like, let's yeah. put your money maybe somewhere else, to, maybe into a nice serum or, or, you know, just something else. But, but yeah, that, that is kind of the theory of it. I do agree with what you said, though, the you get what you pay for, because I remember over the years of being a physical therapist, I've talked to many practitioners from many different realms. And I remember this one was a homeopathic pharmacist. And I was asking about the glucosamines. This is in 2002, when everybody's wondering like do glucosamines conjoined and does it help you with arthritis and there was research studies and he came and he's like listen he's like the, the one that they had at costco he's actually actually pretty good he goes but the thing is is don't go get the cheapest brand over the counter because the the fillers and binders are cheap fillers and binders you, you know if you can't afford the most expensive brand go somewhere in the middle because then the quality of the products they're putting into that are more expensive right. which is why it's more expensive and it just helps your body to absorb it. So I fully, I fully right. agree with what you say. Yeah. yeah. And, and I would love to get some from you. <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. It's the same. You know, they put all the binders and fillers in and maybe a 1% of an orange and call it a vitamin C serum or, you know what I mean? That's just how it, it, it's regulated. So it is important to be yeah. a little bit educated on, on that kind of stuff too, because you can be, you know, people, I think sometimes they take my advice and then they go and go and buy you know this stuff at a more reasonable price and then they come back they're like well it's not really working you know and I'm like well you know it's it, it there's like sciences about it you know it's it's not just yeah. it's yeah so so a couple of things like you mentioned that so I think too like the times that I've bought the stuff from a, someone like you and mm -hmm. in a process like that I I feel like they always say like, don't use too much. And I'm like, really? And I put a little and the little goes a long way. Whereas when I buy stuff from the store, not to knock the stuff in the store, because I've used that plenty of times. Right. I feel like I need to use more or I put it on. I'm like, I need right. to have a little more. And so maybe the cost actually balances out because the high quality product is very potent and you don't need much to cover your whole face. Whereas the other right. stuff, low quality, you feel like you got to put more on to get the same feel of your skin or, or look or look maybe. Yeah, no, I agree. It's like sometimes like when I'm in certain stores, I, I, I like to look at the, I mean, products in there, I don't feel are very cheap. You know, I'm sometimes I'm like, really? Yeah. Like for this? Like, you know, I mean, I don't know. The line that I carry is not very much more expensive than that. I mean, it is, but you know what I mean? It's, so it's, it's kind of shocking to me that, <laughs> that they can get away with that. But, you know, I know that some people that's, that's what they, they can do. And, you know, so that's that's fine do what you can but um just to be i guess my point would be just to be as aware of as possible as 
of what you're actually using, look at ingredients and, you know, try to figure out what they are if possible. Yeah, so would something, would something that has fewer ingredients be better for kind of like the keeping your microbiome uh, balanced and healthy? I would think so, yeah, yeah. The more yeah. ingredients you see in something, um, and I'm not gonna say like even ingredients that you can't read, like there are some things that I know are good for you that I still can't read and I, they're in, you know what I mean? They're yeah. not particularly in my line, but like in, in good lines and I would like have to be like, what was that again? You know, so it's not just yeah. about that, but I would say definitely the smaller amount of ingredients and and yeah. at least the first you know few things that are in them that you understand what they are you know okay no that's good yeah. so yeah so i me being like anyone watching the show so now because we're all kind of like oh yeah i've done that oh yeah i've done that so now we have kind of off balanced our microbiome and our skin and we just want to yeah. kind of get it back to healthy we're noticing more wrinkles we're noticing we look more tired we're noticing the skin just isn't very like nice and we want to know why like where do we start like what do we do i know we need a gel cleanser to start washing our face like maybe mm -hmm. one day at the end right to get all the stuff off yes. maybe maybe use a washcloth because i've done that before and seen a huge glow in my skin maybe use a washcloth as an exfoliator instead of a yeah pretty thing yeah. because it's more gentle and then it gets rid of your non-dead skin that's ready to jump off your face yeah <laughs> Helps yeah, it yeah, yeah. Off your face. <laughs> yeah yeah but then another then what, yeah no tell me tell me what else what oh, okay else? one one um tip that i love to give people it's um it's a mask it's super easy and great for you is a like a raw organic honey mask okay oh. so honey has enzymes in it so it's a little bit exfoliating right but it's going to give you the good kind of exfoliation it's just going to kind of eat away what what may be ready to go um it's yeah. a humectant so it's also hydrating um and it um it's also antibacterial so it's fine for people with blemishes or or anything like that and so if you put um and i recommend it to be raw and organic uh you yeah. could you know put that on your face there's no time limit you know it's it can sit there for 20 minutes five minutes 30 minutes it does kind of start to melt on your face especially in this climate so, <laughs> so be aware of what you're wearing or maybe have a little towel here um and funny it's as funny as it sounds um a lot of people are like isn't it hard to get off and it it's not hard to get off at all like i just go to the sink i have my little washcloth i put it by my sink i rinse my it rinses off really nice and gives a great glow and that brings the microbiome back so that's a really fun tip and i've been using that one for years Oh my gosh, so I'm going to do that tonight. I'm going to go get some raw organic honey and then yeah. I, how often can you do that one? Um, I think you will, you know, maybe not every day, I, only yeah. because of the exfoliating part, but I would say you could probably do that once a week. Okay, all right. I want to yeah. know because I don't want to like, I don't want anybody to like overdo and I also am like, no. Oh. Yeah, oh, I'm looking kind of tired lately. Let me do this a few more times. Yeah, yeah. And you know, like it, it can be a little like some people, if you have super sensitive skin, which a lot of times it has to do with the microbiome. So be a little careful yeah. because it can bring a little bit of redness. Um, yeah. It's not gonna, not nothing bad is going to happen. But um, when your microbiome is is not intact, you're going to be sensitive. A lot of people come to me and they're like, I have the most sensitive skin ever. And I start looking at them asking what they use and i'm realizing that they're i don't think that they were born with sensitive skin i don't think that i think it's because their microbiome is gone and and so stripped that anything that they put on their skin is like you know yeah. that they're almost to a point where they can't use anything because um anything or they can't use anything that they they would think that they could use you know there are certain things that they can they just have to start really slow and it has to be very specialized, I, I would say, because they're, it's, it, it's so stripped that anything that, any product that you put on your skin is just gonna make a flare up. So yes. it's, it's- Yeah, that baby it's skin, right? That baby skin. Yeah, it's baby skin that like really just needs, like it's, it's almost like raw, you know, and it, it needs like some very slow nourishing. And so like in that kind of situation, I would tell someone, you know, 
don't even, I mean, you can wash, rinse your face, maybe with a washcloth, you can get a nice hydrosol. I would only probably give them a hydrosol to start with. Um, and maybe, a, maybe a, a gentle cleanser and then just start there. And then as their microbiome comes back, then you start adding more. But part of the thing, another thing I wanna mention is that a lot of people come to me and they're like, I, I think I have acne or I have rosacea, or I have sensitivity, I have melasma, I want my melasma guns, all these issues that I hear all the time. But I would say, I am going to say probably 79% of my clients have a strip my, microbiome when I first see them. And there's really nothing we can do to help that melasma, to help the acne, to help um, you know, the rosacea without bringing the microbiome back first, because we can't go in with any kind of, you know, sometimes I use certain things, um, not super harsh, but like, you know, I, I do have like a nice vitamin C mask that helps lighten things and certain things like that, but I can't do that unless their skin is intact. So it's always the first thing that, that has to happen to move forward into these other conditions. Wow, that's very enlightening. Um, very enlightening. Uh, I have so many questions, and we have like one minute left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, what I do want to I do want to touch on though briefly, if you can, is so like, what about serums? So you're like, you know, you're gel cleansing, you're hydrosoling, then maybe putting a SPF or something afterward. But is there like a serum that you put on after the hydrosol to, I don't know. Do something. I else. always recommend a serum. Yep. I always recommend a serum. If your microbiome is not in a great place, there's you want to use something super gentle. Vitamin C might be too much. I always tell people to be on vitamin C serum unless they have a stripped microbiome, because then it's just a little too harsh for them. Um, but serums are very um they're yeah, they're very beneficial to your skin. It usually has a smaller molecule that goes in and then the moisturizer kind of just it then holds everything together so that's kind of the series as it goes but yeah a nice quality very gentle something with um like chamomile or um calendula oh. or yeah like certain things even oh you know another thing you could do is like chamomile tea cooled like you boil it but then cool it and use packs on your face um like like maybe squeeze it in a washcloth put it in the fridge and and push it into your skin just to help soothe it and bring that, bring everything back is, is another good tip. That's blowing <laughs> me away. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's so fun. I love it. I, I love I it. Have a so, lot of fun with it. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I mean, I, I have fun with it now too. I, I, I know we got to wrap it up, but um, I remember in Connecticut with my dry skin and I was neglecting to wash my face so much because it was so dry and I felt like I was right. like, harming it that I remember telling one of my patients that like that day like you're right I need to wash my face I can't wait to go home and wash my face and I washed it and I put like a serum <laughs> on and then I put like a moisturizer and it was very fun I felt like uh I was having fun and I looked better afterward too you know but so yeah that only took yeah. me a few minutes well is there anything else you want to you want to say to wrap up no, I mean, I'm always here. If anyone has questions, um, I'm Hawaii Holistic Skin and you can DM me. And um, I, I, I love helping people with, the, with this because I feel like there's so much misinformation out there and it's hard to find someone that kind of is authentic and true and knows what they're doing. So I'm always here for questions. Um, you can DM, DM me on Instagram and I'm also at Satori Salon in Kailua. If you want to make an appointment, I would love to have you in. So thank you for having me, Christine. That's so thank nice you to so see much. you. Yeah. It's great, great to see you. Yeah. So um, everybody go and get on Ivy's Instagram and see how you can see her at Satori. So many of my patients have gone and my yes. stuff, my mom, we love it. And uh, thank thanks you. everyone for being yeah, here. Thank you. Um, I appreciate Ivy. it. Okay.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.